Hmm. Well, they tell me this goes on here somewhere. But where? And uh, how do we do that? Well, I, uh, I checked the instructions, and this is the one page of instructions dealing with this base. And um, useless is tits on a frog, so that's out of there. I guess you're going to have to come along with me your guitar goomba lucky on this journey and figure this out. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we are back. Welcome to the show where I build custom guitars or other stringed instruments and then give them away to you, my subscribers. Today, we're going to mount the bridge on our giveaway j base project. Now, for this, you will need, obviously, a j base kit. This one is a very cheap kit that came from Muse Lady, Muse Lady, I don't, I don't know, some, something. It was cheap. It was like a $60 kit, and um, it shows. Now, this is the bridge. I'm going to hold that up to my camera up there. So you can have a look at that. It is not much of a thing. So we need to set where it goes on the body of the guitar before we can really get into other stuff. So what we need for that is the bridge, the guitar, the five screws, and I think those are pitifully undersized, but they are the ones that came with the kit. I'm also going to use some masking tape, a drill, an impact driver, a marking implement, Sharpie this time, and a tape measure. Now, the instructions for the kit don't tell you what the standard scale length for a bass guitar is. And normally it's 34 inches. A way to test that or check to see what your proper scale length should be is to measure from the nut to the 12th fret. And if I do that with my tape measure here, you'll see that the leading edge of the 12th fret is right square at 17 inches. Now you double that, which means our scale length is 34 inches. So we have to mark 34 inches. Now you will notice that on the pick on the bridge here, these uh, saddles have a fair amount of adjustment. And we're going to use that for when we set the intonation on the bass later on toward the end of the build. So what I want to do is I want to put the 34 inch mark like right toward the center of the area, toward the adjustability area for the bridge so that I have maximum ability to set my intonation. So what we're going to do is take some tape, and we find the end of it. Normally I roll the end over, but for this particular roll, for whatever reason, I didn't. And we're just going to take some bits, and we're going to lay tape there. At this point, I'm not doing this because I want to prevent myself from damaging the surface of the base. This is just so that I can mark on it in marker and not have that stain the wood in a way that would potentially mess up our paint finish later on. So that can go there, no worries. Now, something else I'm going to use is the leftover strings from our first giveaway build project. And if you haven't seen the videos for that, there will be a card at the end of the video that will link you to that playlist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these strings. I'm going to take the thicker two just because I feel like it. And I'm going to use those to lay out where my uh, bridge is going to be relatively centered. But first we need to set our nut in place. 
And we don't need it to be set permanently or fit perfectly. That's a really good thing because it doesn't. It, nah, it is not even close to fitting perfectly. Hell, it's not even close to really fitting. Uh, this kit, if you are a beginner, I cannot recommend it. But, if like me, you have already built one kit and are particularly adept at things mechanical and engineerical, my own word I just made up there, uh, then we are going to be able to get that done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the nut down at the end of the bridge, or at the end of the fretboard. Then we are going to first measure our 34 inches to where the center of our bridge should be. That there, lay that down flat. Then I'll just put a V with the tip of the V being right at the 34 inch mark. That way I know that is my 34 inches. And I want to line this up as good as I can, as straight as I can, so that my measurements are as close to perfect as I can make them. Now, because of my ability to adjust this later, it doesn't need to be absolutely 100% perfect but we want it to be as close as possible. Now I'm going to use the nut, it's, uh, the bridge itself as a straight edge, and I'm going to draw my line across my 34 inch. Now I know that as long as this 34 inch line is somewhere in the middle uh, somewhere in the middle of my bit, uh, bridge here, then I'm good to go on my placement. And I can actually even, if I wanted to, I could angle it, but I don't know, I think that looks kind of silly. I just don't want this line to be in front of the saddles, because the line is in front of the saddles, then I will never be able to get the intonation right on this thing. But I do want it to line up relatively square. So what I'm gonna do is measure off of this line. Now, of course, it's not necessarily the best. So what I'm probably gonna do is go from the heel of the neck on either side, or I'll go from the last fret. There we go. If I go from the last fret with this to being where I want it that gives me just a tick under 10 inches to the face of the bridge so I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to mark this so again measure 37 million times and cut or drill once so I'm going to measure from my nut down here and right at 33 inches on the other side over 33 inches so we are not square at all. Here is our 33 inches there, and over here. This out. And that's at 33 inches there. So what I'm gonna do with that is again we'll go across the front. And this is why we do this stuff in tape first. Because if we didn't, then we could be messing up the actual guitar. So now I just wiggle that because that's not where I want it. Now we have to do is take our strings here and we're going to pull these through the top and the bottom slots or holes on here. 
because we are going to use these to check to make sure that we place our bridge to where it puts the strings square to the body of the guitar. Now what I can do is I want to go left and right here and check to see if I am lined up. This way. And that might do it. Put the tactical thumb on it. Pull that. Pull this up. And we're going to pull this to the end where it's going to sit on our nut up here. And we're going to check the distance along the edge of the fretboard. We're going to do the same thing with the high string. Okay. That looks good right there. I'm going to take my marking implement. And I'm going to mark off my holes where I need to drill for my screws. I know this is incredibly boring, it's taking a long time, but the more time and effort you apply here to get everything to get it right, the better it is and the more accurate it will be. So that is important. And remember, you don't want to drill all the way through the body of the guitar just to get your screws set. Now, all right, that is cool. Now, one of the viewers, one of the subscribers, wrote in from the last build and pointed out that if you take some wax and put it on the edge of the threads, you know, on the threaded part of your screws, it will help the screws go in easier and better and prevent them from galling or otherwise messing up. And this is true. This is very, very true. I've already pre-coated my screws. Also, uh, bar soap, like, you know, any of your standard bar soaps that you would get, you know, normal white stuff, Dove or uh, Ivory or um, Irish Spring, any of those you could use for that and it would work fine. What I'll generally do is just grab a candle and scrape the screw across it real quick and that'll pick up enough wax to be totally good for this or any of your other screw waxing needs now of course if you use soap then you have the added advantage of it being nice and fresh and like like a mountain spring or whatever they used to say on that commercial so you're going to just run these down lightly because this will have to come back off when we are doing our finish. But I have some other modifications planned for this particular unit. And you will have to wait to see what those are. But there is our bridge mounted in place, ready to go. Hold that up for the above camera. Let y'all have a look at that. 
Now, some of the modifications I'm going to do to this will include... I don't like the, the jack plate for this. That is the, the jack and the three tone knobs. This, this pocket right here for the pickup is a horror show. It's, it's done terribly. It, the pickup doesn't fit. So, I am going to be getting some replacement kits. And we'll further the customizing of this particular guitar. And we are going to have a lovely bit of work with that. And I may change this out and even change out where the jack, where the, where the instrument cable plugs in in the guitar itself because I do not, as a general rule, care for plugs that come straight out of the front of the guitar. Because if I'm playing, if I'm on stage and stuff, if I get particularly, um, shall we say, enthusiastic, you can hit that, break your cable, and then you have just screwed up the show until a new cable is run. So you don't want to do that. Next, um, we're going to be in the next episode. I promised you guys a new giveaway for just something that I will decide who gets it, when they get it, and that's just how it's going to be. This is a special prize that I have come calling the Golden Goomba that will be given to one subscriber and commenter at my choosing. And that person will receive a special t-shirt that you cannot buy. If you do want to buy a Guitar Goomba t-shirt, obviously not the orange with the uh, camouflage Guitar Goomba, that this is a one of a kind, this is just for me. But if you want a black Guitar Goomba t-shirt with the Guitar Goomba in white, then you can leave a you know, in your comment, you can say, I want a t-shirt, I'll tell you how to get one. You can contact me on at Guitar Goomba on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you want to win this very guitar, full, full rules for the contest are in the description. But all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment below. Strictly speaking, liking the video is not required, but that the more likes the videos get, the higher YouTube will rate the video and the more they will promote it, which is better for the channel. So I encourage you to click the like button. When you subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the notification button so that you will be notified of when I post new videos. So that's subscribe to the channel button right there. You can check out the playlist for the first giveaway build, which will be right here. And the most recent upload on the channel will be right down there. So till next time, this is your Guitar Goomba Lucky saying, keep rocking.